Hello, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're taking a look at the Ender 3 upgrade, the Black Knight. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so you all all of you watch the live stream um, of us building the Black Knight. Um, it didn't take too long to put together, if I'm willfully honest. Um, so let me talk about the kit to begin with, and then we'll move on to talking about the, uh, the, the, the models that we did and why we chose these models and how we did some testing. Um, so the kit itself is actually really easy to put together. I suppose I didn't necessarily fully appreciate to begin with how much you were disassembling when you were taking this apart. And obviously you are disassembling this to, you know, to an insane level, way more than when you bought the original printer. So you have to disassemble the whole X axis and you have to disassemble the whole Y, the bed frame piece, because there are four linear rails that go on this. So there's two on the Z, there's one on the X, and there's one on the Y. Um, this comes with all the rails, all the screws, and some spares, I don't really know why. It comes with the new X brackets, it comes with the new tool head bracket, and it comes with the new bed plate that you have to use so that now you can fit it to a, to a, to a sled. Um, also comes with a new Y stop, because you have to move where the Y end stop is so it triggers correctly. Quality of the kit, honestly, the parts are machined really nicely. Like, really nicely. Um, everything on it fitted, all the screws fitted. It is super, super solid. And what I really like is if we turn around here, you can see here that we have the original Z rod, but there is also the ability here that if you want to fit a second Z to make this dual Z, this has that bracket as standard. So I really like that because that means that you're not just changing a stock Ender 3, you're also being able to make material upgrades as well. So I really like that. That's sort of a level of forethought that a lot of companies probably wouldn't do. Um, the kit itself is not that expensive. Price is £145, and that's potentially the only sticking point for me. So, this is a precision milled aluminium, you know, set, and these are, they're high wind rails. I've, I've, to be clear, I've no reason to believe they're not high wind rails, um, but they say high wind on them, they say they're high wind rails on the website, so... You, you make your own choices about that. For this price, I would be really surprised if these were... So, we've talked about this before with the Voron kits, right? So, high wind grade their rails, A to D, I think. Um, A is what goes on industrial CNC. B is what they normally sell on their stores. Um, C is what they tend to ship internationally, and then there's D. So, these could be C or D grade rails. I don't know. So, anyway... Uh, price wise you know it, it's one of the it's it's a fantastic kit that you're getting for the money you just have to make the decision about whether or not this kit is worth it to you as in you've bought an ender 3 you know you've already shelled out for an ender um and then you're buying the kit it wouldn't make sense to me to buy an ender 3 specifically to do this upgrade because there are better machines that you could buy at stock that don't need all of this. But that being said, what's the point and who's this for? So who it's for is someone who's already bought an Ender 3 and doesn't get exactly the quality that they want. They want to push their speeds and they want to they want to push, you know, they want to push their quality to a different level. This is a really, really good kit and and this is a really good way to do that. Um, now We'll have a look at some of the prints that we've done. You'll see that we've done three of all of these prints. And the reason why is that we started out at... Let me put these in order. So, right. So we started out at 50 on vase mode. 
we went to 100 on VARS mode, the middle fell out of that one, and then we went to 150 in VARS mode. We couldn't get this to go over 150, but not because of the kit. So this still has a, it has an upgraded um, extruder motor, but it's, a, it's just a dual drive thing. Um, and it still has a stock hot end. Now, if you want to go faster than 150 millimeters a second, it, this literally cannot push filament through it fast enough. The 100 millimeters a second was a really happy medium. It's almost, it's about 80% faster than the vast majority of people print on their Ender 3. And the quality you will see is really not materially different. It prints beautifully at the 50 millimeters a second. Really, really nice at 100. And it's passable at 150, to be honest with you. Um, we'll take a look at the benches and we'll take a look at the, uh, the calibration cubes as well. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these. So let's start with the classic calibration cube. So we've got three of these because they're all done at different speeds. So first of all, we've got this boy. Hold on, let's get that to focus. There we go. As you can see, 50 millimeters a second. Absolutely perfect. We move on to 100 millimeters a second. So this is normally beyond most Ender 3s, certainly a stock one. As you can see, there's no ghosting. Everything on that came out really nice. Beautiful first layer. Very, very clean. We move to 150 millimeters a second. There is some slight ghosting on the Y there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But for 150 millimeters a second, that is a very good cube. Now let's take a look at the benches. Now you might wonder why there's four. That's because this is what happens. Hold on, get that to focus. There we go. This is what happens when you accidentally leave your benchy on vase mode. <laughs> Completely hollow, no good. But. What we have, first off, is we have the 50 millimeters a second one. Overhangs are really good. Circles are really good. Surface finish is really good. Like that. We've got 100 millimeters a second, which, again, beyond most Ender threes at this point, no ghosting. Really nice finishes. Good surface finish. And then finally we come to the 150. So the only issue we had with the 150 is the Z seam did seem to be a little bit more prominent on this. Um, but, and we've got a little bit of ghosting on the bow there. You can see we had a few extrusion issues. This is the main issue with going this quickly. It's not quality necessarily. It's the extruder not being able to keep up because we're still on a stock Bowden, right? So it's really hard to get a stock Bowden with a stock hot end to run at 150 millimeters a second and it still actually get everything all the way through. So last but not least, we've got 50 millimeters a second on VARS mode. And I have to say that this is pretty much flawless. Came out really, really nice. Um, we broke this one <laughs> when it came off of the machine. We, uh, this is 100 millimeters a second. Again, all of the overhangs and everything still came out really nice. We just unfortunately end up cutting the bottom off. 150 millimeters a second on vase mode and we started to struggle. So you can start to see the beginnings of under extrusion on some of these underhangs or overhangs, sorry. Um, outside of that, still for 150 millimeters a second on an end of three that uh, okay so we it's not stock right it's not stock because obviously we've done we've done um we've done the linear rail upgrade but it's still a stock hot end a stock main board it's the vapor smooth bed i mean it's still very impressive for for, for what the kit actually did Okay, so quality of the kit. 
let's talk that first. I, I think this is a fantastic quality for the kit. I think that, um, I don't really think you could ask for it to be much nicer. The parts are all machined nicely. They're anodized correctly. There's no scuffs, there's no marks. It came packed really well. Um, the rails perform really well. We didn't degrease any of those. Print quality. We didn't change any of our print settings other than speed when we did these prints. So this is the normal profile that we use for an Ender 3, which for the most part is pretty much a stock profile out of um, out of Ultimaker. We're not we're not using we're not using like custom profiles or anything else. For the most part, this is about getting the machine set up properly. So it's possible you could actually tweak extrusion a little bit go up to say 120% extrusion and you may be able to solve that um, that issue of, of sort of under extrusion when you're going at higher speeds. We didn't do that because this was about does the kit work and what does it perform like compared to it's sort of a stock ender three. Um, there's no denying that on a stock ender, 65 to 70 millimeters a second really is about the maximum you can push it and you'll be sacrificing quality at that point. We normally print on our ender at about 50 to 60 millimeters a second, um, anything above that and we find that you start to have, you start to have issues. That's, main, that's down to a single Z, it's down to V rollers not bit, having flat spots or whatever. One of the biggest issues you have with enders is that you can buy 50 and the level of quality difference you will have between those 50 is insane. It is a very significant spectrum. You will have some that don't work out of the box. You will have some that have flat spots on their V-rolls causing, causing a wobble. You'll have ones that don't have things tightened properly or something's broken or snapped or whatever. So, so to say, to be able to, to be able to produce this, um, you know, these sort of quality prints consistently with this kit, very impressive. Um, all in, would I buy it? So, yeah, I think I actually would. Um, the only caveat I would make is that if I bought one, I would be buying a direct drive extruder upgrade for mine as well. Something like the BitQ Hermit or something like that, maybe. Um, or I'd buy a Hemera or I'd buy a lightweight direct drive to go on this. I'll also be honest and say that if I was putting a direct drive on this, I'd also be putting a second Z um, on this. And at that point, you, you have to ask yourself the question, when does this stop being an Ender 3? Now, this is a, this is a, a hobby for tinkerers, right? We are, we are people who mess around with stuff. You know, we, we make Franken machines and, and, and things like that. You know, we are, we are makers. So maybe this is the right kit for you. But it isn't the right kit for everybody. Because the right kit for everybody is to buy a machine stock that does what it says on the tin. This is, a, this is you taking a machine that you feel is performing under where it should be and bringing it up to a higher standard. And that's fine if you've already bought one. But should you be going out and buying an Ender 3 and then slapping this kit on it and then slapping a direct drive extruder kit on it? And my answer is absolutely not. Because by that point, you're at close to £400 and you should be buying a Sidewinder X2. Or you should be, you know, looking at building a, a Voron switch wire. Or, you know, you're getting dangerously close at that point. It's sort of four or five hundred pounds. You're getting dangerously close to a secondhand Prusa Mark III at that stage. It's, the machine is still what it is, which is that it's an ender that you have done significant improvements to. Now, these aren't just silly little part cooling parts. You know, these are machined aluminium. These are precision made. This is a, this is a significant upgrade off the stock ender. But... Should you have to do it? Should it be necessary? And the answer is no, it shouldn't be necessary. That's not the fault of this kit. The kit that you're fitting here is, as I say, it's high quality. They're using, they're re using really good parts. It's a fair price for what they've done. You know, you're getting, you're getting tooled aluminium, you're getting all the parts, you're getting, everything fits together nicely. This thing is rock solid now. I could pick this up by the extruder. It is absolutely rock solid. 
just not convinced you should have to be the one to do that. I kind of feel like Creality could bring out an all-linear version of an Ender 3 for, you know, £350, and people would buy it. Would it be the same quality? I don't know the answer, but I don't see why necessarily you should be the person who has to fix manufacturing defaults. That being said, if you've already bought an Ender, 100% I recommend you get this kit. It's really, as I say, it performs really well. It does exactly what it says on the tin. And um, we would keep our Ender like this. But, and there is a but, if you're going to do upgrades to an Ender, I would challenge that you should go all in. Don't piss about in the margins. Go to the heart of the issue, which is that this is an Ender 3, and you might not like it. With that in mind, keep an eye on the channel because we have something infinitely better. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for joining in.